an 11.39 and that's with some shitty stuff in it and I haven't charged it in a long time so that's actually that's got salt and alum in it right now and I don't remember the mix all I know is it didn't work out all that well all right so now now I'll put the alum mix in there stuff is for you but it's all natural the pH is what's going to be the problem see it's not acid doesn't burn nothing at least not so far <laughs> the pH might bug me but it's not acid All right, guys. It's been charging overnight. Uh, my charger's on maintain now, so it's not really putting any current in. Well, thirteen point two zero, right around there. So now. We will test it. All right, I got the tester on here. And when I hit this, it's gonna it's gonna do a test. Right now, it's actually saying the voltage. When I flip this switch, it's gonna throw 100 amps at the battery. So, and I hold it for 10 seconds, then I take a reading. First time I've ever done this. So. This thing might smoke, they tend to apparently. So here we go. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, 4 1000, 5 1, 6 1000, 7 1000, 8 1000, 9 1000, 10 1000. This is right at the 10 mark. Throw another 100 amps at it real quick and just see what happens here. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, 4 1000, 8 1000, 9 1000, 10 1000. So it's gone down. This is 100 amps though. So what was that, like 20 seconds? It's still in the week. And we know it'll start the truck.
Okay guys, I wanted to do a comparison. So I got the tester over here on my four-wheeler battery. It's a regular 12 volt uh, deep cycle battery that I use to start my four-wheeler. Um, it just sits on the four-wheeler all the time because I hate those little freaking batteries, as you can see. Four-wheeler's kind of covered in stuff because I haven't been using it in the winter. But this battery is always charged because I have a solar charger hooked up to it. So it's always good to go. And as you can see, hooked up right now, it's reading, well, basically 12 volts there. So I'm going to throw the tester on for 10 seconds and we'll see what it reads. So it's uh, reading the same really as that other battery. It is holding a little bit better though. The other one went down. See that's 100 amps. See those coils heating up in there? All it's doing is, is shorting the battery or something in here. I don't remember how it works but it's heating up those coils. They turn red. So that's interesting. Um, and I know this battery works for the four-wheeler. I don't know if it'll work to start anything bigger or not. But it's a regular acid battery. It's not alum. It's acid. So, uh, anyhow, just wanted to do some kind of a comparison for this tester thing since I haven't really used it before. Okay, so I got my good battery in the truck, and I just got home from a basically two hour drive uh, so that should be good and charged I'm going to test that and I'm going to throw the alum battery in the truck and see if it'll start the truck I tried to run a Sawzall yesterday with it on an inverter and it wasn't working but I don't know 100% why that inverter might not have been big enough it would work for a few seconds and then it would, I think it might have been going below 12 volts and I don't think the inverters, that inverter can really handle that. It's got to stay above. So, unlike when starting it doesn't really matter if you go below 12, or not as much. All right, that's in. See if the truck starts up here. So the thing is, even though maybe the you know this wouldn't work with the inverter by itself, if you change chain several batteries together, as you normally would when you're using an inverter in a solar setup, they're not going to drop the voltage as much. Oh, heavy battery. So already it's up a little bit higher. There's a different style battery. There's a starting battery in a deep cycle, for one thing. Oh, dang it. Tripping over the battery here. And we're on the 10 second test here. So as you can see it's up in the thousand mark. So that's a that's a really good battery. Really, really good. I mean, 
I think you might even get better than that on some tests, but I mean, this battery is only a few years old and it sits in my truck, so. I don't even know how old it is now, come to think of it. That's warm. Yeah, that was that. Okay, I went and I got the, the uh, cooling fan out of the ice truck. And it, there's no writing on the motor on it, or it's, it's so rusty you can't read it or whatever. So I'm pretty sure this is running a little over 10 amps. So I got my tester on DC 10 amp. It's got a 10 amp fuse in it. Um, so I can't run it for very long. I'm surprised it didn't blow the fuse when I did run it. Um, it must be surging or something. I don't know, I, I'm not 100% sure on this tester, but anyhow, this seems to be giving me the right... I got it on DC 10 amp over here and DC 10 amp. So then, and it, it's running through, the negative is running through the tester, the positive is connected direct, so when I connect the other end of the positive to the battery, the fan will go. So as you can see, it's minus 10, it's taking 10 amps, a little bit over 10 amps. So I don't want to wreck my tester, but now we know that, I believe anyhow, that that's what it's, this is drawing. I'll hook it up, I'm actually going to put it back into the ice truck so that nothing can get to it, because this thing wants to move one thing, it's kind of dangerous. Um, and uh, hook it up and we'll run it for a while and see how long it'll run. So I'm going to go get over there and do that right now. Okay, I got it just hand tightened back onto the truck here. So it ain't going to go anywhere. I'll put another one. And I got jumper cables attached to it. Going up here jumper cables here through the window and get attached to the battery. Don't be surprised if we get some airflow in here. Holy crap yeah. Hear that? <laughs> You can tell it's running. <laughs> I grab my screw gun and attach this better. It's uh, 723. So I got uh, attached a little bit better now. It's a little bit quieter. So it should be drawn around 10 amps based on what the tester said. And that correlates with what the one guy who replied and said they run around 10 amps. And this is for a big freaking truck, you know. So, and motor. So that should be right. I'll let this run, check it about every half hour. As you can see, it's still running. It's eight. 30 basically so an hour um, this battery yesterday I tried to run the sawzall with my inverter and it didn't work really 8 amp sawzall on an inverter and I don't know if I think it's because the battery dropped before below 12 volts maybe but anyhow it, it would run the sawzall for a few seconds and then quit so I didn't charge it, I just left it outside overnight and then I just did the video with the, throwing the battery in the truck and starting the truck with it and then I brought the battery over here and threw it on here. There's no, you know, hasn't been charged. So and now it's ran this, this 10 amp draw fan for an hour 